Welcome to another video on the Mini. Now I've seen a whole load of posts online of people complaining about their car overheating or the fans always on and when they switch the car off the fan stays on especially that stage two fan which is really loud um, and also maybe the car feels a little bit sluggish. Um, so I have found out what's wrong with mine. I'll show you how to find it yourself and what my problem was um, and then also I'll show you how to fix it as well. If they sound like something similar to your car stay tuned we'll get this one fixed. So a bit of a background then. What happens is the car is overheating. It thinks it's overheating. I only know that now. So the car's overheating. Fans often on when I'm driving, especially slow town driving. And then the stage two fan keeps kicking in. And then when I've turned the car off, the fan also stays on. It's really annoying, really loud, drains the battery. And more annoyingly, even when I'm driving, the car, because it thinks it's overheating, cuts the power to reduce engine temperatures. Now, the thermostat on these, there's three styles of thermostat that, well, three styles that I've come across. There's the first one where the temperature sensor's underneath. Now, Mini changed it out because the loom that went underneath when the sensor used to leak used to drip onto the connector and cause the pins to rust and that would affect the reading. They changed it. They moved, I've got, this is the, uh, your main outlet from the thermostat. There's a pipe here with, a, with an aluminum elbow I'll show you on the car. That pipe has this style temperature sensor fitted from a BMW 1 Series as well, vertical like that. That's the second version of the uprated uh, thermostat issue. The third version is this one. So you don't have that anymore. You have it here. So no longer on this outlet, but just here instead. You still have this one at the back and there will be a loom to split the one into two. The second version also has the one into two, but it has the second one, as I mentioned, here. Now, let me show you that on the car. First one to move out of the way, put this cover off. We've got this little harness here, squeeze them, pull that out. You've got this, it's supposed to be rubbery, it's quite brittle now. One little thing to pull there, pop that off here, move that out of the way. It's connected down there, we need to sort that. And then you need this pipe off. You need to undo that one and this one. Pull that gently this way. Off there. Careful, because you can break it here. Pop that out of the way. I put this part in shot. This is your main outlet. That is here. So, yeah. That one, where this temperature sensor is on the newest, comes out of that outlet. So, here comes out to a little rubber hose into this uh, aluminium elbow and you have a temperature sensor there, which is this one. And let's see what that's reading. So I've got my uh, code reader in and you do need a code reader if you're gonna find out what this is. On a cold engine, it's about 20 degrees outside. The engine coolant temperature should say 20-ish, near about. Mine says 40. The problem with that is the car's reading 20 degrees higher right the way through the range. So running temperature on this between 90 and 100 now runs up between 110 and 120. The car won't let that happen and therefore keep bringing the fan on. The reason you hear the fan on when the car is off is the air stops circulating through there and that temperature starts to creep only by three or four or maybe even five degrees. The problem with that is that it pumps it up to where the car thinks it's overheating switches both stage fans on again, even though you're not going anywhere. Right. To foolproof test this, what you do, unplug that temperature sensor. Your temperature will drop to around minus 40 because it's not getting a signal. So it just goes into cold mode. If I unplug the jump harness, which is just back here, which I'll show you. Move that out of the way, plug my new one in, even though it's not on the car. That will now read the atmospheric temperature from that, which has dropped 23 degrees. 23 is about what it is today. So it's gone from 40 down to 23, proving my point that this is not reading correctly. So I take off the other end of that really stiff breather pipe. And then while we're there, because we're disconnecting everything, it's time to disconnect the battery. So you don't want to be disconnecting ECUs and big plugs while the battery's connected in. So there's three really large plugs under this lid. They need disconnecting so we can move the large loom out of the way. 
Then I removed the airbox uh, and I got stuck on the lower inlet pipe. There's two like plastic clips on the side and they just get stuck. So I put a screwdriver in there to hold the clips back. Much more of a faff than it needed to be. So remove as much of the engine loom as you can. Some of it goes under the turbo, so you can't get it all out of the way, uh, but you can make space around the thermostat by disconnecting, undoing some clips, and just pulling it outside. Think about the new part into play now, so you can kind of work out where you are. Um, we've got one, two, three pointing this way, three pointing the other way, yeah, that's right, three points in that way, one, two, and then one going back that way. Although that one could be quite hard to pull away from the block, we'll, we'll probably put a touch of grease around there. And then this is just an O-ring seal. It's only got three bolts. So find them, they are 12 mil head, and uh, we'll get disconnecting these. A bit of a fight to get this out of the way. Now, ideally, you unplug everything, move it all out of the way. I've unplugged what I can get to. There's some other stuff underneath the turbo though. Not going to be getting it then. So we've got to drain the coolant for that. We're going underneath. Rather than completely disconnect the radiator hoses, it's oh, missing. It's that one there. What you can do is just unclip the hose and then I'll put a big screwdriver in. So I haven't got to completely pull it off. Um, but yeah, that works. It'll just take a bit longer to drain out. I hope this is starting to become clearer. But with this, you can see different sensors so that's your uh, that's one of your 10 ones and get rid of that I uh, can't do it one-handed there's your other one and this ooh, is that jump harness that you don't need anymore and you can also begin to see that hose needs to come off that hose needs to come off they should um, highlight another two and then you've got this hose there and that hose there we'll get them off first you've got to use various pipe clamps and grips and pliers and all sorts we've got to remove each of the coolant hoses from the thermostat start with the easiest the ones that are closest to you and good luck with it I'm going to give a bit of a zoom in, so I'll try and show you where you're going for. So, this top one, someone had been at this before and moved the thing the other way around, moved the clamp the other way around, so that was a nightmare. That, uh, that one, haven't managed to get off. We got it off from this elbow instead, so that will come off with it. The one underneath, come on, where are you? There come off no problem and then to this side those two again pretty easy now what you're looking for is that there that's your top one and I was wrong it's not a 12 mil head it's a 10 mil head by the looks of things so uh, we'll do that one and do we see the other two under here no okay bit of feeling required but refer to your new pot Once all that's out, you've got three bolts to back out that hold the thermostat in, and then there's a near impossible clip to remove on the rearmost hose. In fact, getting it off, not so bad. Putting it on, nightmare. If you're not sure that you've got tools to be able to get in and refit that, don't take it off, it will not seal. So just leave it. You won't be able to go any further.
now it's time to just wiggle and wiggle that thing out of there it does come out eventually compare it to your new one swap only of the smaller hoses now before you start to re put it back in So that was, as is usual, not one of my favourite jobs um, on this car, to be honest. No real differences between the old and the new one then, except what I was on about earlier, there's a temperature sensor here next to this like bleed screw. On this one, there's only the bleed screw because the temp sensor is there on the elbow. Now you will have to refit your elbow and that temp sensor, even though it doesn't do anything, you just don't plug it in. Let's get it all back in. Getting it back in looks easier than taking it out though, thankfully. So. We shall see. I reattached all the pipes in reverse order, start with the ones at the back, the ones that will be most difficult to get at, um, become really annoyed of it all, and then the worst one, which is that clip, is yet to come. No, and so, the worst job in the world was getting that clip back on. Now I did it using some of these, and I really suggest you buy some of these. Um, they're like forceps that they lock at the top. They don't open all that much. Um, I think they're for what vets use to grab hold of arteries and stuff. But anyway, get the clip on it and you have to go down there with it. And then once it's down there, you can kind of line it up, in which you can see it is there. You have, to line, you have to go down vertically and then push that top bit, like the spring, to the back and then just keep working it around with your finger. Now, when you've got that around there, you have your hand also down here with my thumb just pushing it around. It is not easy. It is a, a right pain. It is. Where is it? It is uh, that clip there. But yeah, at least it is seated. At this point, it's all the big hoses and all the little parts of the loom and stuff that you remove for access can go back in now. Once they're back in, put your coolant tank back on, check all your fittings, pop some coolant in it and put your airbox back on. So now it's all back together, time for the slightly nervous of it. You can hear it's running. I filled it up with about four and a half litres of coolant. Uh, that's a pre-mixed stuff. Um, so I'm going to add some distilled water until I get it up to the max on my uh, reservoir. And then it should mostly self-bleed. However, remember on the top of the thermostat there is that screw, the bleed screw. So I've started the car and I'm going to start slackening that off now until the uh, only coolant comes out of there and then we should be good. I don't want to be doing that when it's hot. So uh, let's see how that goes. Coolant temperature now, it's running for a couple of minutes, is 52. Now before I did this, a completely cold engine said about 40 or 42. So the fact it's 52 now, I'm hoping this is working. It seems like it is and there's no leaks. Okay, we're done. We're sorted. And the car sits at a steady... 86, 90 degrees on idle. I'll have to take it for a spin to find the leaks, but at the moment, nothing's coming out except all the stuff. It did do a big burp and chuck a load of coolant everywhere, which was a bit annoying um, when the thermostat opened. But other than that, we're good. Not a job I fancy doing again. Um, my advice would be 
I bought the TVT one because it came with the different loom. If you can buy the loom separately and you know which one you're buying, go for an expensive Marl one or something like that because you don't really want to be doing this twice.